We are not afraid to die if we can all be together. Summary. We are not afraid to die if we can all be together is a biographical account of a journey in the southern Indian Ocean. It is written by Gordon Cook and Alan East and represents the awakening of survival instincts in adverse situations. The narrator describes a particular part of his journey in the southern Indian Ocean. He is chronological in his approach towards the narration. He and his wife Mary and their two children, Jonathan and Suzanne, who were six and seven years of age, respectively, started their journey from Plymouth with an estimated journey of three years in July 1976. The first part of their 1.05 lakh kilometer long journey went smoothly until they reached Cape Town. From there, they hired two crewmen Larry Vigil and Irv Segula to help them tackle the rough sea of the southern Indian Ocean. As they sailed out of Cape Town, they started to experience gales which blew continuously for the next few weeks. The narrator was not bothered as much about the gales as he was about the waves. He found them to be alarmingly high almost as high as their main mast. By December 25th, they were 3,500 kilometers east of Cape Town. Despite the rough weather, they celebrated Christmas with joy and pomp. The rough weather continued till the new year and resisted change further on. On the evening of the 2nd of January, there came an ominous silence with no wind and a big rock. What sounded like thunder turned out to be a big wave that wreaked havoc on the ship. The narrator was wounded in the process, and so was Suzanne. As the ship was about to capsize, another wave hurled her upright. The author asked his wife to handle the wheel while he went to fix the damaged starboard to prevent water from entering the ship. This problem was accompanied by other issues like blocked hand pumps and a short circuit in the electric pump. The narrator and his crew spent the whole night pumping steering and working on the radio to issue mayday calls. Suzanne's injury on her head had worsened. The next morning the water level in the ship was under control, and while looking for a leak below the water level, the narrator found the ship's main rib frame smashed to the keel. It was evident that the ship would not hold together till Australia. They decided to reach Eel Amsterdam a small island a few hundred kilometers to the east. On January 4, after 36 hours of pumping, the water level in the ship had come down to a few centimeters. Owing to the severely damaged condition of the ship, they hoisted the storm jib instead of the main mast and headed towards the island. Clouds started to form around 4 p.m. in the evening again. A storm started within the next hour and continued for the next whole day. When the narrator went to comfort his children, Jonathan asked him if they were going to die. The narrator assured him that they could make it through the storm. To this, Jonathan responded that they would not be scared to die alone. This response rendered the narrator speechless. It strengthened his resolve to survive in the face of nature's calamity. On the 6th of January, the storm receded, and the wind was at ease. The narrator was working in the chart room trying to calculate the wind speeds, drift, currents, etc., when his daughter Suzanne came up to him with a card she had made herself. She expressed her love for her parents in it. The narrator felt energetic on a new level to look for a survival strategy. Around 2 p.m., he asked Larry to steer a course of 185 degrees, Hoping they found the island and went for a nap in his bunking bed. He was awakened at 6 p.m. by Suzanne, who wanted to hug him. When he asked her why she wanted to hug him, Suzanne informed him that he had found the island and was the world's best daddy and captain. They anchored offshore for the night and were welcomed by the island's inhabitants in the morning. As he stepped onto the island, he found himself grateful to Larry. Herbie, his wife and his two children, who were brave in the face of danger and were not afraid to die. Conclusion of, we're not afraid to die if we can all be together.
We are not afraid to die summary gives us some valuable morals. The words spoken by Jonathan about staying together in the face of death inspire the narrator to do everything to save the people on the ship. In the face of danger, staying together can motivate us to cope with the situation bravely. Suzanne's bravery and endurance during the event also show the importance of maintaining a strong character in the face of adversity. Strength in unity is an underlying theme of the story. For more update please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you.